Welcome back to another episode of the Skateboard Ranch, a series where you can follow my adventure as I set out to build the ultimate campground and DIY skate park paradise. In this episode, we're finally getting down to business and pouring that concrete to complete the first skate structure in the form of a mini ramp 3 feet high and 20 feet wide. I had spent almost a month preparing the forms for the first wall that I documented in the previous episode, but now my goal was to do the three pours needed to complete the ramp in less than a month so that we could have at least one session before winter. My biggest concern while preparing for the pour is that I realized that it was nearly impossible to get some concrete delivered on the weekend around here, which was making it a lot harder to get some people over to come and help. After reaching out to a bunch of people, I managed to assemble a small crew that would be able to help me on Fridays, even though they didn't really have any experience finishing concrete. That was putting a lot of weight on my shoulders. When we were pouring at P45, we were always at least a crew of 6 to 8 with concrete finishing experience on pieces smaller than what I was about to attempt. So one side of my mind was telling me, you're setting yourself up for failure. The saying doesn't say set in concrete for nothing. If you fail, it's set in stone. But the other side of my mind was telling me, you can do it, just go for it. And that's what I did. Order the concrete and we were set to pour the next Friday. The morning of the pour, my stress level was through the roof. Me and Gab had spent the morning getting everything ready and now we just had to wait. Luckily when the truck showed up, all that stress went away and the adrenaline kicked in. There was no more time for second guessing. It was time to step into action. It's go time! After all that work and anticipation the past few weeks, it was quite something to finally see some concrete coming down the chute. The first concrete pour of the ranch was officially on the way. Even though it was a first experience for most of the crew, putting the concrete in place went like a charm. Thanks to René, one of the best concrete delivery men I had the chance to work with. He was patient, hands-on, and didn't mind getting back in the truck even if it was just to move a foot or two. We have had our fair share of bad delivery guy in the past at P45, who just don't care and want to get done as fast as possible with minimum effort. So it was really nice to start the day on the right foot with René, who genuinely cared about doing a great job. Now that most of the heavy lifting was behind us, the rest of the crew signed off, and it was up to me, Gab, and Dali, who really wanted to help, to shape and finish the wall. So we literally got down on our knees and started the process of sculpting the transition. Filling the voids, removing the bumps, smoothing everything out with the bull flow, checking with the guide for any imperfection and doing it over and over again. In an attempt to get the shape as perfect as possible before the concrete had hardened. As we were progressing, I started to realize that the sun was getting lower and lower and it looked like it was gonna set before the concrete did. So I quickly ran to my neighbors to see if I could borrow their generator for the evening. And lucky for us, they generously obliged. With the sun coming down, the temperature was about to follow the same path, slowing the hardening process of the concrete even more. At that point, the shape was dialed in. The goal was now to get the surface as smooth as possible. And in order to do that, you gotta keep working it with a finishing trowel until it has completely set. It's all about patience and endurance. That's the thing with concrete. You know when you start, but you never know when you'll be done. After a really long and exhausting day, I'm proud to say that I think we nailed it. I couldn't be more happy with the result. The shape is on point and the finish is smooth as butter. There wasn't much time for celebration though. If I wanted to stick to my schedule, I had two weeks to remove the form, rebuild everything on the other side and do it all over again. And at the same time, find out if my reusable form design was actually gonna work. But before I could do any of that, I had to deal with that big pile of extra concrete. Even though I calculated the amount I was going to need many times over, the fear of not having enough made me order a little too much. In the heat of the moment, we were able to whip up that little form and pour that slab that I might be able to use as a bench or something. But what was left in the truck just ended up in that big pile on the ground. As they say in the concrete world, better be looking at it than looking for it.
lo and behold, the forms were out. It wasn't easy, but we managed to get them out without cutting them into pieces. Now we just had to put them back together on the other side. It was quite something to finally see the quarter pipe standing freely on its own. But there was no time to waste. Two done, six more to go. After a lot of shimming, the support columns were in place. And with that, it concluded the relocation of the forms. It ended up working like a charm. But there was still a lot more to do to get ready for round two. I had made good time on the rebar and was now ahead of schedule, which was a good thing because the weather was about to turn from good to bad. The one major thing I still had to do was prep the coping and weld it. Luckily, I was able to work on that in the garage while the rain kept pouring. So far, I had been lucky with the weather, but the few days before the pour, it rained every day and the forecast for the Friday pour wasn't looking good at all. But as days went by, the forecast looked a little more promising every day. So I decided to go for it and order the concrete. Rain or shine, we were gonna pour on Friday. When I went to bed on Thursday night, it was pouring rain outside. Naturally, I looked at the forecast again, probably for the thousandth time that week. The rain was gonna continue through the night, but it looked like we might have a break in the morning followed by 40% of less than one millimeter an hour, which honestly isn't too bad. Even though the forecast was somewhat promising, the sound of the rain on the roof kept me awake for a good part of the night. But when I woke up on Friday morning, the rain had finally stopped. Naturally, one of the first thing I did is check if the forecast had changed. The probability of rain had risen from 40 to 60, but the quantity were still pretty much the same. AccuWeather, on the other hand, was a lot more optimistic, with only 30% chance of rain in the morning and 50 around noon. Then, to better understand the big picture of what was in store for us, I went on to check the real-time radar imagery. We were basically sitting right on the edge of the line of precipitation. If the system kept moving east, we were going to be fine. But if it was to move north for some reason, we could get a lot more than we bargained for. At that point, there wasn't much we could do about it except prepare for all eventualities. So while we were waiting for the concrete truck, me and Gab started setting up a structure to be able to put a tarp up if needed. As we were getting it done, we heard the truck slowly making its way along the trail. And since I really didn't want to finish the job in the dark again, I asked to be scheduled as Renee's first delivery in the morning. And yes, of course, I asked to have Rennie again. 
<laughs> and I think he was as happy to be back as we were to have him again. That's until the truck got stuck. In an attempt to reposition the truck, Renny went just a little too close to the edge of the sand patch and both front wheels sank into the softer ground. I should have gave him a better warning. The ground all around the ramp is solid and well compacted, but just a little further, there was only a small layer of sand over the forest soil, which had been softened even more with the rain from the previous days. With 10 tons of concrete still in the truck, the situation was precarious. But we all kept our cool. After some digging and some careful maneuvering by Rene, we were able to get the truck back on solid ground. Definitely not the best way to start the day, but we shook it off and carried on. To be safe, we decided to keep the truck movement to a minimum and do only one pass to fill in the forms. After that rough start, it seems like things were finally looking up. But naturally, since misfortunes never comes alone, it had to start raining. At least, we were prepared for that one, so the tarp went up. With the shelter in place, we continued to push through with confidence. Anyway, the forecast was calling for just a few millimeters. Unfortunately, the forecast couldn't have been more wrong. It rained so much. We even had ale at some point. Let's just say that this was less than ideal. There was water everywhere. The tarp was leaking and dripping right into the transition. But on a couple occasions, it really felt like the rain was about to stop and we would be in the clear. Only for the rain to start all over again. Come on! Stop! No. It really felt like the weather gods were trying to drive me insane. The sound of the rain on the tarp was literally driving me nuts. Ce bruit là, je vais en rêver. After teasing me for a few hours, the rain finally stopped for good. It gave us the break we so desperately needed to be able to finish the ramp properly. And after another long, exhausting day full of misadventure, we were finally able to pull through. <sighs> Definitely not the easiest pour, but in the face of adversity, we never gave up and all those efforts weren't in vain. Despite the rain, the second wall looked just as good as the first one. Perfect shape and smooth finish. And this time, I ended up with just a few buckets of extra concrete, a good improvement from the last time. So far, I was keeping up with the schedule, and if I wanted to skate a few times before winter, I had to keep it like that. So I had a week to get everything ready for the last pour.
During the week leading up to the last pour, the forecasts were pretty much the same as the week before, calling for rain on Friday. But when the day finally arrived, the forecasts were promising again, calling for only a few millimeters of rain. Needless to say that I was highly skeptical about that. So I had a good look at the radar forecast and realized that there was a big cold front coming in, but it was being kept away by strong wind from the south. So as long as the wind kept pushing the front north, we were gonna be fine. Naturally, I still had the shelter ready to go up if the forecast turned out to be wrong again. Obviously, pouring the flat is not as challenging as the two previous pour, but a good result is equally important. And I've learned from past experiences that you should never underestimate what looks like an easy pour. So me and Gab were committed to give it our whole and make sure that the flat would be as smooth as the transitions. One of the crucial aspects about the flat is that it has to be, obviously, flat so that the water can drain away easily. I had already implemented a 2% slope in the design, but any imperfection could cause water to pull in the middle of the ramp and that would be far from ideal. Everything was going great, until the south wind that was keeping the rain away started blowing some large needle all over the fresh concrete. I was ready to deal with some rain, but I never anticipated that those orange needles falling off the trees and getting stuck in the concrete would be an issue. So we raised the shelter in an attempt to stop the needles from ruining the finish of the slab. The tarp helped a lot, but it was definitely not an impassable barrier. And a lot of needles kept finding their way onto the fresh slab. I did my best to minimize the effect of the needles, but I had to accept at some point that there was gonna be a bit of texture in my finish. It just goes to show that even if you try to prevent any eventualities, you can't plan for the unexpected and you just gotta make the most of it. The perfectionist in me was a little bit disappointed, but I had to come to the realization that the result was far from catastrophic. I'd say that except people that work with concrete, the vast majority of people wouldn't even notice the little groove left by the needle if I wouldn't tell them where to look. And it's definitely not something you can feel while rolling on it with a skateboard, so I would say that the ramp is a big success. Even though I felt really clumsy on my board since I didn't really skate for the last two years, I had to be the first one to drop in. After all that work, it was quite the feeling to finally take a few turns in the ramp. Even though I was standing on it, I still had a hard time believing that it was actually there. But despite the fact that the concrete part of the build was officially over, I still had a lot to do to get everything ready for the first session the following weekend. Since I only had a week to get ready for the flat section, I had left all the supporting forms underneath the second wall, so it was time to get rid of them. And little did I know, Mother Nature still had a surprise in store for me. She decided to give me a little taste of what was coming in the next few months. That first snowfall was a bit demoralizing. But I knew that a couple warm days could get rid of it all. So I kept my hopes up and continued pushing forward despite the snow. After trying the brute force method, I realized that the form weren't gonna go without a fight. But since they had done what they were meant to do, there was no need to keep them in one piece, so I gave him the sozzle treatment. The second section turned out to be even more stubborn than the first one. But after a few failed attempts, it finally started to give way. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. With the forms out of the way, it was time to start hauling some gravel and get the ground around the ramp a nice finishing touch. It's crazy the difference a few load of gravel can make. It makes the whole area a lot cleaner and it will be less messy than sand when we step off and on the ramp. 
Now the only thing left to do is build a nice fire pit and we'll be ready for the first skate session of the skateboard ranch. After giving me a few headaches the past month, when the day of the session finally arrived, Mother Nature blessed us with some amazing weather. Because of the COVID-19 gathering restriction, I had to keep the crew to a minimum. But for me, the amount of people was irrelevant. My goal was to have some good times with some good friends and be able to witness the first few tricks going down on the ramp. And just to be able to see people enjoying what we've built is the best reward I could get. Even though the first season of the ramp was a bit short, it will be there for many years to come and for many more people to enjoy. After more than a year and a half of relentless work on the house, the land, then the ramp, it's still hard to believe that the ramp is actually there. What seemed like a pipe dream at first has now become a reality. And obviously, I wouldn't have been able to achieve this without the help of a lot of people. First of all, I would like to thank everyone that came to the ranch to give me a hand, either on the house, the land, or the ramp. Your help is greatly appreciated. Secondly, a big thank you to everyone that contributed to the GoFundMe campaign. All your donation really helped push the project forward. And finally, a special thanks to all the followers and subscribers on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube that keep sending me some good vibes and help me keep stay motivated. Like always, if you're still watching and you like what you've seen, don't be shy, hit the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to the channel. You can also follow The Ranch on Facebook and Instagram. I know I'm probably repeating myself like a broken record, but again, without every one of you, that project would still be a dream. Thank you for helping me making it a reality. See you soon for another episode of The Skateboard Ranch.